Hello there ladies and gents, what's going on? It's David and today I'm going to be giving you some more months on a free ultimate and this time I'm actually going to show you a full quest. Not the full, full thing. Um, I'm only going to be showing you the monsters in question because if I was going to show you the entire thing there'd be parts we're just waiting on the the wives to spawn. In this case we are fighting against or hunting, quote unquote, um, three Giganoxes. It's one after the other. This is an advanced quest in G-Rank. Someone posted it. Um, in the lobby, and we're like, hey, do you want to do this? And we're like, why the hell not? Why the hell not? Um, so anyway, that's what we're doing. That's the whole premise. And to my knowledge, the only difference between advanced quests and not advanced multi-monster quests is that multi-monster quests usually divide the health of, you know, the corresponding amount of different wyverns in the area. So if there's four wyverns, ideally, this is what I'm told anyway, they have, you know, four times less health than they normally would. Maybe they have a quarter of their normal health. I don't know what the percentage is exactly. In advanced quests, apparently, each wyvern has its normal amount of health times by the difficulty rating, usually corresponding to the star level of uh, of the quest in question. That's that's how this works. That's what I'm showing you. And in this video, I want to talk about obviously the game but uh, more specifically the lands and why I've adapted to it a fair bit. In the last video, I, uh, I talked about, you know, in, in brief, what I was planning to do with guides and so on, um, and I'm still going to be doing that, but I thought I got this gameplay and I thought, you know, this is really good gameplay. Um, to me, I thought it played very well. Um, you know, there's probably people out there and go, you suck at this, but, you know, I thought it was a very good game. Um, and it illustrates a lot of the points I have to say about the Lance as I dive over the Giganox right there. Um, it's, you know, I didn't want to get hit, so I just was like, screw it, Superman over that thing. Um, you know, I didn't get hit, so nothing wrong with that. So anyway, as I said, I wanted to talk about my thoughts about the Lance and this, this gameplay really does illustrate that. Now, for a fourth point, let's say my experience with the Lance before playing this game was somewhat mixed. Um, as I went through the series, I slowly and slowly got more adapted to the idea of you must dodge everything you see. So at that point I was using weapons such as the hammer, the, the greatsword, I used the longsword slash Tachi for a bit. Um, I never used all swords, I, as I said, I, I never really used the gun lance or a normal lance because I didn't like the idea of you have to block, or I didn't understand it because at that point, I was looking at the weapons with the idea or mindset of um, this bit just sped up just to you know get to the action quicker. Um, with the mindset of like, as I said, you you must dodge everything with the lance or the gun lance and everything like that. It's not an ideal platform or move set to dodge everything. Um, and you know, there's the different ways of wearing that, especially with the lance and gun lance. But I'll talk about that in a sec because your normal button to roll with a lance or gun lance would be a back half or a sidestep after you've attacked, which can be exploited like hell in every game, but back then I didn't really know about it as much. I do now, but uh, I haven't really got it down to a T, so I don't really rely on it. What I'm talking about is that there's an invulnerability zone or time frame. Um, when you back half or sidestep with a lance, gun lance, the same is true with the um, normal rolling action you can perform with other weapons, but with the lance and gun lance you can attack immediately and you do not have to like change your position all that much to dodge out of the way of things. So any attack with a very short time frame, such as tail swings or even fireballs, you can back up through because of this invulnerability phase. This time phase is extended or decreased depending on if you have skills for evasion or you have skills which negate evasion. So the, the time frame is shortened and then you can't really do it as much. All the time frame really does is gives you more room for error. That's that's what it is. But anyway, back to what I was talking about. The the weapons in question I preferred were weapons where you could dodge roll because I didn't want to get hit. Um and to get, taking hits was was naturally bad and that was the playstyle I was used to. Which uh, which got me very far. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the great sword and the hammer in particular because they were like mobile weapons, which seems a bit weird. The hammer, when you have the hammer out, you can run around um, and you are not penalized for having the hammer out, other than you can't sprint. You can 
set up pretty powerful attacks from the hammer being drawn or you know sheathed because you could go straight into um, your charge attack you could go straight into that or you know so it wasn't really much of a penalty for you to have the hammer sheathed or or uh, actually out and equipped in your hand it didn't really matter so it was a bit of flexibility in that whereas the great sword you had that thing equipped you move slow as hell and it severely impedes your movement as a as a result of you being slow as hell you carry around this giant hunk of metal um, so that's that's where that comes from however with the great sword it was more of hit like strike first and then you, you you'd put you'd sheath the weapon away and uh, and you'd go from there so that's where the mobility aspect come up and because of these you know unsheathing attacks you know you're attacking while the weapon sheaths so you get that bonus it favored armor sets such as crit draw which increases the crit chance or affinity um, basically you're gonna likely to crit if you do an attack from the weapon being sheathed that was the whole idea um, which benefited the great sword in particular especially if you want into a, a charge attack from sheath that will do a lot of damage uh, but uh, as I said, those weapons relied on rolling. Now with the lance, dramatic change of pace. I've used it a fair bit, but as I said, not a lot. Now in this game, I decided to think, you know what, I'm going to use this a lot. And I love it. I think it's great. And the reason I think it's great is because when you knuckle down to it and you look into the moveset and you see what's available and, you know, and you think about how you can work what is there for you to use, you can, uh, you can get a lot of variation in what you do. Now, the lance is traditionally, obviously, a long pole arm type of weapon. Um, you have a shield, so if you block, your sharpness isn't reduced, like, say, with the, the great sword. Um, I'm giving this guy some antidotes because he didn't have them. Um, so, you know, you have this long pole arm, you get a fair bit of reach, you have a good shield. Um, and, you know, you can block a lot of attacks. You know, pretty much anything from Giganox here, you can block. It really doesn't matter. He can't do a lot to me if I've got the shield up. Obviously, he takes stamina damage and so on, or stamina hits, you know, so you can't do it indefinitely. But uh, it's a good sturdy platform for sticking in a fight. You don't have to run away, you just put your shield up, counter attack, and it goes on from that. Now, if you wanted a bit more damage, which you can do, because the weapon strikes very quickly, as you can see here, you can just keep jabbing. And the benefit of the back hop or the sidestep is that you can do up to three jabs. I love this move as well. You can do up to three jabs, sidestep left, right, or back up, do it immediately again. So in that short time frame, like if you think about um, how much damage you can get off, there's no stopping that combo. And it's not slow, it's not sluggish, and it does a fair bit of damage early on. Like say if you compare it with a hammer, you do the triple pound, you have to roll and you have to do it again. And these are, and those attack sequences are fairly slow. The great sword, for example, if you wanted to do the charge attack constantly, you would traditionally have to um, obviously have the weapon sheath, run around, get to the desired frame, pick, figure out the time you need to do the attack, wait for that moment, start the charge, and then you hit them, which guaranteed you'll be a lot of damage, but you won't be hitting them that often. And I don't like them in a group saying because you don't know if the wyvern or monster or, or whatever's attacking you in question is going to react to you because the benefit of the great sword was that if you got the timings down and you knew the Wyvern's patterns, you could time that charge from anywhere if you knew its turning speed and what it was likely going to do. So you'd hit its weak spot, usually the head, and stun lock it, and then you'd do it again um, from a different angle. Um, but online, you, as I said, you can't guarantee the Wyvern going for you because there's three other people, regardless if they have taunt or sense on their armor sets, it really doesn't matter. Um, you, you can't guarantee that. But. Um, and also, and also another benefit with the lance, I find, anyway, is that all the attacks are very tight and controlled. Um, because the weapon is focused on what is in front of you, there's no clipping people from the side. So you can help reduce hitting other people, which doesn't do damage, but you stop them from attacking and overall lowering everyone else's damage. Um, you see this the example of the back cupping right here, I, can, I move the way away from that poison mist. And very useful. You go go uh, that. I love it. But as I said, the attacks are very tight and controlled. So if you compare it with something like the door swords, which just fly around everywhere, who naturally trip a lot of people. As a result, you're preventing other people from attacking, from acting. There's been instances where I've gone into 
um, engagement with something, you know, I'm trying to fight it. And um, this little sword guy comes in, and I have to roll away. This is when we're using a great sword, um, which is not a fault of the weapon itself. Um, but I had to roll away because I was like, I knew an attack was coming. Like it was a, I think it was a, yeah, it was a barrier off, and my health was getting about halfway. And uh, I was like, you know, I need to get out of in here. So I rolled out of the way. The dual sword guy dived in where I was rolling. So he came from that direction, hit me, stunned me, so I can't roll, and they couldn't get up. And then Barry Half just ri like ripped his claw across, and I, I died as a result. Now you could probably blame that on me about having bad positioning, but there have been many times we've been tripped up via uh, numerous weapons and other weapon known for this is the the long sword if you do the spirit mode where you just flay the thing around like an absolute nutter um and it just gets everyone's way but unless you don't have that similar scenario with the gun lens but this uh, this application of like the speed you can you know attack um very tight controlled attacks um and you know you can you can mix it up a fair bit with how you attack. For example, you can do the the charge if you, you're just out of range. You don't want to put the weapon away. You can block a wide variety of different attacks. You can spec into blocking to take less damage from blocking attacks or less stamina um, damage from from blocking attacks and so on. Like with well, this set that I have at the moment, I swapped it out from the Helios before. This is the Barrier Off um, X set. I believe, which I've gemmed, so it gives me constitution plus two, which makes it so stamina using moves, like mainly blocking, evading, you know, things like that, take up less stamina um, to use, so that's very good, especially with Alliance, because I'm evading a lot, either to, either to obviously take less damage, get out of the way, um, so on, blocking stuff, you know, it's very important, and uh, I also have evade two, which as I explained earlier, increases that window in vulnerability when back hopping, sidestepping, rolling, and, and so on. So it's very useful as the mini giggy starts latching on to get off, mate. You know, it's like that. I also love the weapon designs, but I'm a bit in, uh, I'm a bit, uh, you know, a bit in a dilemma when I'm thinking, I, I don't know what else to use. I like the lance a lot. You think, oh, just use the gun lance. I like the gun lance too, but I want to try something completely different. Um, I may try out the switch axe again. Now this isn't for like a main weapon. I just you know I need to go in order of all the weapons eventually um, to do the to, to do the weapon guides on them. But at the moment the lance is definitely my favorite weapon. I just think it's great. Um, the fact that you can avoid a lot of damage via blocking the evasion. You have the reach. Um, it's just a very 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 good weapon. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, guys. And, uh, I catch you later, have a great day.